Let it snow, let it snow, let it, uh, what? It hasn't snowed at all this winter, really. 2016, 2017, unless you've been up here, there hasn't been much snow anywhere in the country. So I'm going to go over the long range for the next couple of weeks, and we're going to see, is there any snowstorms on the horizon? What areas could get snow? What areas could get warm and cold temperatures? I'm going to talk about that, and I'm also going to show you a model, a weather model that you can use, anyone can use this, that goes out uh, for 30 days. So you can see the weather 30 days in advance. Okay, so I'm going to talk about that as well. And then I'm unveiling a new show that I might be doing on this channel, and I'll talk about that in this episode as well. So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode, State of the Weather Address. All right, so what I thought I'd do is we go over the next uh, two weeks, and we'll just uh, find some uh, snowstorms. There really isn't anything major uh, that I see right now on the horizon, but I will uh, go over some potential for clippers uh, and maybe some lake effect snow. This is the current pattern right now as of the 28th of December, and we're just going to look at this real fast. You got some troughiness out here, some ridge building into the western United States, pretty good ridge, and that is you know, really pushing down northerly flow, northwesterly flow into much of the country, okay, for the central and even parts of the western U.S. Okay, so you got northerly flow out there. And what's also happening is you're, you're going to start to get some northwesterly flow set up along the lakes here and some pretty good at northwesterly flow. And that's going to that's gonna result in some lake effect snow and the clipper machine. The clipper machine is going to set up for uh, kind of this area right here. Okay, there's going to be several clipper systems that will uh, come out of uh, Canada. Okay, so when you have northwesterly flow in the jet stream, they're going to ride southeastward. Now, they don't always have a lot of snow with them, so sometimes it's just a cold shot of air, but we'll see what happens. Now, before I get into the forecast, I want to unveil a potential new show that I've thought about adding onto this channel or onto my Facebook page. And you can find the link to my Facebook page in the link below if you want to follow me on there as well. I'm thinking about doing potentially daily or nightly forecast breakdown live streams where we uh, talk about the weather on a daily or nightly basis, maybe even look into the long range. A lot of people have been requesting for more frequent updates. And so it'll be more of a casual uh, live streaming type of thing. I'll probably do some... Uh, forecasting contests maybe some forecasting games because it will be live so people can interact there'll be q a so if you want that uh, go and comment below you know offer some ideas uh, offer some topic ideas i'm thinking about doing this uh, uh either on facebook or youtube or potentially both so if you want to follow me on facebook the link is in the description there below so this is the uh, 500 millibar heights okay so we're looking at the kind of the jet stream area okay the mid levels of the atmosphere and we can find uh, a lot of features you know in this uh this level this is really good for long range i think this is uh you know maybe your most important uh you know the 500 and 300 millibar heights are probably the best to look for for long range okay you don't want to get overly detailed you just want to look at general patterns here right now we've got actually this is uh, a little bit far in the future this, this is right now and we already went over that so we'll uh, fast forward a little bit and watch what happens here I mean you you're seeing a lot of Northwest flow in the United States just continuous shots of this uh, you know cooler air it's not overly cold but you know cooler shots of air that come down you're just getting this constant Northwest flow this opens up uh, the potential for clipper systems which come out of typically Alberta okay and they track southeastward and they can have a you know a little cold shot of air, a little cold front, and sometimes there's a little batch of snow associated with them. Okay, so usually it's light. Usually it doesn't get above six inches, or you know usually like one to four inch events. But you can see some clippers in the Dakotas, parts of the Great Lakes region, Minnesota, potentially in the northeastern United States. And with this type of setup, when cold air runs over the lakes, you're gonna get some lake effect snow as well. So this area could kind of uh, get a little bit more snow, more frequent snows, nothing overly heavy, but the uh, frequency will definitely increase. Okay, so we're going to continue this. Still a little bit of northwest flow, it becomes more zonal. What's that? It means it starts to get a little bit more flat in nature. You got some troughiness out here, maybe a little bit of a ridge there, but overall a kind of flat flow, and so you're going to get systems that kind of ride off the Pacific, 
and uh, go east to west. So it's usually very quick. The systems are quick moving. They're weak, and sometimes they don't even have precipitation at all. And so this is a uh, this is uh, let's see February second. So this is going out. You know, a few days here. We'll uh, fast forward it. A little bit of a trough comes on to the uh, western United States here, but not overly strong. Okay, there's not really much energy with it. You'd like to see a lot of strong. And, uh, strong winds and stuff like that on the back side so that when it moves in this will kind of advance forward but that's not really happening okay so we'll fast forward this and the wave really weakens there's not much to it here it is right here not really going to be any much of a storm but we do get a little bit more west southwesterly flow uh, in the uh, eastern United States but doesn't look like anything that's going to support a major storm system okay but now it gets a little bit colder and maybe this has a little more potential but there are two different branches which can kind of screw with storm systems okay you'd like to see one big trough not these multiple little troughs here another little trough out here or a little wave short wave we'll uh, fast forward it and uh, the northwest flow kind of returns okay for the central u.s probably going to you know, move eastward into the eastern United States. And this is getting really far out. This is two weeks in advance. Little tiny waves move in. But again, you'd like to see stronger waves, like something like that, but down here. And you'd like to see them closed off, those little loops and stuff. You're not really seeing that. They're very quick moving, weaker wave. So this is a cool model that you can use. We're going to look at the precipitation type, okay? So we're getting to the fun part now. This is the CFS, and you can look at this up on uh, PivotalWeather.com. There's plenty of different websites, but I'm using PivotalWeather.com, and it actually goes out to 756 hours, which is, what, like a month or so? So you can see this weather about four weeks into advance. Now, there's a disclaimer. You can't get overly detailed with this type of stuff, especially far in advance, uh, especially past 240 hours, kind of around this area right here take things with grain of salt, but you can look at kind of general uh, patterns like the jet stream we were looking at. Sometimes that's a little bit more accurate, but you know, you'd really like to see uh, multiple runs, okay? These are where you get your runs. They happen about four times a day. You'd like to see consistency between each of the model runs when you, when you uh, look at that, okay? But it's not always accurate. It's just kind of fun to look at. So since there's not a whole lot going on, we'll just uh, we'll peer forward for the next uh, couple of weeks here. So this is uh, currently right now, cooler air in the eastern United States, maybe a little bit of lake effect snow, cold air advection near the Great Lakes. All right, so we're gonna fast forward here. And uh, right when that northwest flow begins to set up, you can see these this clipper system moving uh, you know, southeastward, gonna bring some snow for the northeastern and northern US and some Great Lakes snow or uh, lake effect snow as well. So you, this is a, a good uh, pattern for some lake effect. I don't think it's going to be overly strong, but when you get cold air to overrun these lakes, okay, cold air uh, advection, which means cold air moving somewhere. Okay, when it moves over these lakes, the lakes are a little bit warmer. Water has, uh, you know, keeps heat in a little bit longer. When that happens, you can get some lake effect snow. So you're going to get some lake effect snow out ahead of this. Um, you know, depending on where the wind's blowing. So it's going to be on the east side of the lakes here, southeast side. So you might get some uh, chances for that. Another little clipper system moving south around the uh, 5th, 5th of uh, February into the northeastern United States. The models have been indicating a storm system uh, kind of in uh, this area here. Okay. Um, now, Overall, it doesn't look overly strong, but it has shown some snow. Here's your 540 line, your freezing line. Showed some snow in the northeastern United States, maybe as far south as the Carolinas. Uh, you know, the some of the models have actually showed some pretty good snow, but overall, it doesn't look like to me like an overly impressive system. But we'll have to watch it. That's around the 5th, 6th, 7th of uh, February. And behind it, some cool air, some cold air for the north central U.S. especially. Uh, that's pretty cold. We'll fast forward it, but that'll be something to watch. Go back there again. That's uh, around the 5th and 6th, so you can mark that down. It'd be something fun to watch. Another little clipper system around the 8th. Another one around the 8th, and then that's the 10th, the 9th and the 10th. This one looks a little more impressive, okay? 
Got some very cold air here. Pretty windy when you get those isobars close together like that. You're going to get a lot of wind on the back side, okay? Cold air advection, northerly winds, northwesterly winds there. Cold wind, that's for sure. And that's around the uh, 10th, so we'll have to watch the 10th as well. You can mark that on your calendars. Pretty good clipper system there. Okay, so we'll fast forward. And now some warmer air after uh, mid-February, it looks like. Around mid-February and after that. The 540 line, this is the freezing line. The average temperature in the atmosphere of freezing is way in the northern United States. So you got some very warm air here. A little low pressure system here, but we'll see what happens to that. Does that do anything? Not really. Overall systems, there's another uh, clipper system, late February. And so the CFS has actually been showing a lot of weak systems for basically the entire month. And this is going into late February now. Just a lot of clipper systems or weak low pressure systems like this one here that kind of developed out here and moved northeastward. But that's getting really far out. Take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but overall, the current pattern doesn't look overly strong. Now, I haven't dug into any of the ocean data or any of that stuff, but you can look at the ocean temperatures and patterns and stuff and you can determine uh, whether the pattern is going to be active uh, based off of that or not as well. So. Overall, it doesn't look overly active, but that could absolutely change. But there's a couple of systems we can watch, and if they become a threat, I guess I'll uh, make some videos about that in the future. A cool tool that you can use for long-range forecasts, or to view long-range forecasts, is the Climate Prediction Center by the National Weather Service. They issue temperature and precipitation forecasts for six to 10 day periods, eight to 14 day periods, one month periods, and even three month seasonal periods okay so you can look at temperature and precipitation so for the next six to ten days that would be under here you just put your mouse right over that temperature and precipitation they think this area down here is uh, the probability of below average temperatures over here it's a probability above average temperature so if you had something like 90 percent there'd be a 90 percent chance of below average temperatures which is really confident for going way into the future so really anything above 50 percent you know, lots of confidence, but they're forecasting a 50% chance or greater probability in the southern U.S. of above average temperatures over the next 6 to 10 days, and, uh, you know, a 33 to 50% in the northern and northeastern United States. Precipitation, you know, maybe a good chance of being above average in the northwestern United States, and a moderate chance in the southeastern United States, okay? So we'll look at... Uh, Look at uh, the 8 to 14 day outlook. And uh, cooler temperatures in the northern United States, warmer in the southern U.S. And precipitation continues to be active above average in the northwestern United States and dry in the southwestern United States. So let's see uh, the monthly outlook. So kind of a similar look. Cold temperatures in the far north central United States, warmer in the south, you know, far south United States. Precipitation, probably going to be above average, possibly near the Great Lakes with those clippers and the Great Lake, um, you know, the lake effect snow. And potentially over here in Montana, maybe some more clippers up there as well. How about the seasonal over the next three months? This goes out through, uh, let's see here, it goes out, I think through March. So this uh, has below average temperatures in the far northern United States, above average in the far southern United States. And precipitation, above average in the far northern United States as well. Probably with those clippers and stuff. And again, this is getting really far out, so there's a lot of other things that could impact that. But this is a cool tool to use for long-range forecasting. And you can kind of match that up with your weather models. Alrighty, and that concludes today's long-range forecast. So if you want more of these forecasting breakdowns, forecasting tutorials, go ahead and click the subscribe button here. And I'll be releasing more of these on a, a weekly basis. And again, I'll also probably be doing that forecasting live stream ordeal on a daily, nightly basis, probably you know three to five times a week in between these shows. And so if you want those, go ahead and click subscribe. And uh, you know, if I decide to do them on Facebook, I'm not really sure if I'm gonna do them on YouTube or Facebook. Facebook's relatively easy with their live streaming service. Go ahead and click on the link in the description and uh, follow me on Facebook and I'll probably be doing some stuff on there as well.
you know, some forecasts, tutorials, Q and A sessions, and some even some forecasting uh, contests and games. Okay, so uh, so if you want to do that, go ahead and click subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you soon.